Hey, welcome to Weld.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG, and today we're going to do a segment on certification almost specifically for racing, but it doesn't have to be. It's actually exhaust systems, so that could apply to aircraft. It could apply to just about anything. And you need to know that there are certain things you have to figure out before you do your testing. One is, what wall thickness do you want to certify for? So we're going to pick, just out of random, we're going to pick the uh, top fuel dragsters in HRA. And what they have is they have, they have steel exhaust. And because they have steel exhaust, we're going to use steel tubing. Now, this doesn't fit their tubing diameter exactly, but it doesn't have to. This is 2-inch diameter tubing. What we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to follow the bylaws of D17.1, D which is American Welding Society. And believe it or not, it's a, a fusion welding spec for aerospace applications. Well, we don't have to go to the highest level of this. There's several different levels, and that's what we're going to do. You got class A, B, and C. Well, we're going to select class B. And the reason for that is because these are uh, exhaust systems that are going to be on the ground. And even though they're going to go through rigorous testing, uh, we're going to have the operator certify to a particular thickness. Now, what's the formula? Well, I just happen to have two inch diameter tubing. When you do tubing, you can do flat welding as well, but you can't do a flat certification and do tubing. So that's why we've selected this. So if you're building an exhaust system, you're going to be putting tubes together. So let's go tube to tube. What's the wall thickness of this? Okay, I measured this wall thickness and it's 45 thousandths. So here's the formula. It's 0.67T to 4.0T. Now what that means to you is that if you weld this and you pass, you can qualify down to weld 030 wall thickness. You can't go below that. And you can go up to 180 thousandths wall thickness. So that's a pretty broad range and that's why I selected it for you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these two tubes together and we're just going to weld them in the 1G. Typically, you can weld all the way around or you can uh, manipulate your part. So I'm just going to show you the 1G. Now, as far as a fillet weld, it changes the whole world. You can't do this test and expect to be qualified for a fillet weld. So we're going to do a fillet weld. So we have to take tubing and we have to put it on a thicker, flat material. And we're going to do a fillet weld. And once we complete these tests, we're going to take them over to Cali County College and we're going to go to their non-destructive lab and we're going to do a mag particle test on them. Now, we'll do the visual test and we'll let the, uh, the certification guy over there do a visual on them as well. But we're going to do a mag particle and that's the best way to test this. We're not going to put an x-ray on them because they're not aerospace qualified. So anyway, let me get my gear on. I'm, I'm going to tack and weld, tack and weld and show you the end result. Okay, now the, the fit up on this is so good because they're machined ends, it's hard to see where the joint is. You know, so uh, what I do is I, I put my super microscopic system in place. I actually have cheaters in here and then I supplement them with these glasses. And what it does is it blows it up very large just so I can see the joint. Now, normally I get by with about a 1.75, but in this particular case, it's just a very, very good fit. So. Uh, I've tacked it in about six or seven places. You can tack it in four, three, ten, whatever you want. It's up to you how you're doing your manufacturing. But just make sure that you make your tacks small enough that you absorb them. You absorb them and then you've just got a solid weld and you can't see where the tacks are. So I'm going to go ahead and weld this in the 1G position. Uh, got to get all my gear on, get my uh, gloves and everything else. So uh, I'll join you in just a minute.
Okay, now I've got this uh, circumferential weld made. Just want you to know that what I used was a gas lens, but I used a number five cup. And what that does is it narrows the jet stream of the argon down. Uh, for a flat weld, not a big deal, but I'm getting ready to do a fillet weld and I need to be able to run my tungsten out there and actually be able to get in tighter. So that's why I put that on here. Now make sure you don't turn the gas up on this. Uh, it only operates well anywhere between about 12 and 17 CFH. You can see the orifice is much smaller. I'm also using a 1 16th pointed tungsten. Uh, again, I'm using the, uh, the, the, the chartreuse colored tungsten. Anyway, it's called laser tungsten. It's got, uh, it's got some ingredients in it that make it weld good for all machines. So anyway, it welds really good. I was using probably around 35 to 40 amps on this. Um, you know, your travel speed may vary, your amperage may vary. But uh, I looked on the inside there and it is fully penetrated. Now we're going to have to take it over to the lab and see what it looks like on the mag particle. So uh, this part of it's done. This is as welded. I'm going to go ahead and set this sample up. Now this sample, this sample is your fillet weld. And because I've got a half inch thick plate, if you will, you can weld and qualify to any flange thickness. I mean, what's four times that? You know, you can weld an inch thick. Uh, you know, you can, you can, in any flanges that you have an exhaust uh, to a thin tube. And it's kind of difficult because the, the heat seems to dissipate a lot to the thick material. So you got to get a really tight arc and don't let the top side tube burn out on you. And that's the trick. So just get the arc as close as you can. Uh, get cheaters on, do whatever you have to to blow that up. Now I'm not going to be able to weld this at uh, 30 or 40 amps. I'm going to have to turn it up probably, uh, there's a happy medium there. I'm probably going to use about 60 amps uh, just to be able to get both materials compatible. So I tacked it in six sp spots. You can do it in four, whatever you want. It's no big deal. Uh, again, I'm using steel ER70S2. Uh, diameter is 045, 1 16th pointed tungsten and uh, I'll get back with you in a minute. I got to reset my machine and I'll, I'll get started.
Okay, now that I've finished with the fillet weld, just want to make mention that I put a very small fillet weld in there. You know, a lot of times people ask about the size of it being too small. Well, just keep in mind in welding, the weakest part of your weld is your heat affected zone. And that heat affected zone grows and enlarges by the more heat you put in. So if you put a small weld in, lower amp, you're going to have uh, less heat input and less crack sensitivity in the heat affected zone. So smaller is better in this particular case. So you don't have to put a big fillet weld on there at all. Okay, so I'm going to let this cool off and uh, we're going to head over to the college and uh, show you a little uh, magnetic particle test. So see you there. Okay, now you saw me weld in the shop this, this piece of metal right here to this tube. Now I put in a fillet weld came over to Cali County College where I have Joe Clausen with me. Joe, good to see you again. Good to see you again. Joe's the NDT instructor over here and he has various types of NDC procedures including the one that we're about to use. So uh, Joe, I understand you still got x-ray, you got penetrant, you got mag particle. Uh, what else do you have here? Here at Cali we have five basic methods. We have liquid penetrant, mag particle, eddy current, radiography, and ultrasonics. Ability to do all the tests, except for big, huge airplane parts, basically. We can't test those because we don't have big enough machines. Okay. Well, you know, in this particular test, what we're doing is we're trying to simulate welding exhaust systems, whether you're welding on a race car or just welding, you know, in your own backyard. If you ever want to get certified to some degree, that's what we're explaining. Now, all I'm going to recommend on this one here as your engineer is that this material is magnetic, it's best to go a mag particle test so you can see if there's any cracks in there. Now this one happens to be a fillet weld, you can't x-ray it. It just won't show a very good, clear, concise x-ray. Nor do you need to because when you're into the exhaust systems, you're more into the class B and class C type welds. So this, if you pass, will allow you to weld various thicknesses, plate to tube. Now that doesn't allow you to weld tube to tube. And Joe, you've got the, uh, you've got the tube to tube here. So the same thing applies. You've got to go tube to tube, weld it, and we're going to ask Joe to mag particle both of these. So uh, is there a chance we can get this done? Absolutely. Not a problem. Which one do you want to do first? Let's, uh, let's do the one with the flange. Perfect. That'll work. All right. We've got both of these parts, Wyatt. Okay. Both of these look good on mag particle. Okay. Now, when, when you did a visual inspection, did you see anything that would cause you any any heartburn? Did you see any cracks or anything? No cracks. Everything looked pretty good. The welds were pretty flush. Fillet weld had a nice texture and, and uh, orientation to it. I, I feel pretty comfortable with these parts. Okay. So, uh, Joe, thanks for doing this segment with me, and thank you for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG. To stay up with the latest TIG welding technology and education, subscribe by clicking the button below.